Perfect. So morning, everyone. Um, hope you're all well and ready for this 30 minute webinar. Um, we have two expert speakers speaking on the topic of effectively communicating your whistleblowing system internally and externally from Good Corporation. Yeah, that's Lisa and Debbie, who you'll see on your screen right now. Um, for those of you who don't know who Good, Good Corporation is, uh, they work in the business ethics and compliance area for, for over 20 years. Um, and what they do is they essentially support their clients in the development of responsible and ethical management uh, practices. So Lisa is a senior consultant and Debbie is a director at Good Corporation. Just a few things to go through regarding the format of this webinar. Um, Lisa and Debbie will be speaking for around 15 to 20 minutes um, on the topic. And they've got a presentation as you can see um, there's quite a lot of content, so really looking forward to hearing their insights. Um, for any questions you may have in the chat function, if you could please add those in and then uh, we can go through them at the end. Obviously, as this is only a half an hour webinar, we may not be able to go through them all, uh, but we'll go through two or three. Um, and Lisa and Debbie have kindly put their email addresses on the end of their slide deck. So if you do need to contact them afterwards, if uh, you've got any pressing questions, please do. However, we can always create a piece of content with answers to your questions um, it, over the coming weeks after this webinar has finished. Um, if you could also all keep yourselves on mute, um, that would be great just so we avoid any background noise. Um, yeah, we'll kick start. Uh, Debbie and Lisa, over to you. Thank you very much, Lucia. Um, so I'm Debbie Ramsey. Um, uh, this is my colleague, Lisa, who is a senior manager at Good Corporation. Um, and we will run for 30 minutes. So um, hopefully we finished, um, well, just after half past. Um, and uh, yeah, we'd like to um, probably spend about 20 minutes going through content, 20, 25 minutes, and then take some of your questions. It's quite difficult in this format uh, to have a lot of interaction. So as Lucia said, we will take questions. If we can't answer them all, we'll, we will create some kind of blog or something to sort of get back to you. Um, but so just a little bit about um, Good Corporation. Uh, Lucia has introduced us already, but we have been going 20 years. We were founded in 2000, and we're a recognized leader globally in, in business ethics. So we work in over 85 countries, something like 600 projects we've done over the last 20 years. We have 160 or so clients, and we work with large and small. So 17 of the FTSE 100 and 40 of the French GAC 40 but we're also um, working with a lot of smaller privately owned companies as well. Uh, and we have offices in Paris and London. So our work is in business ethic, responsible business management. Um, and we do that with companies to understand how they look after their employees, their customers, their suppliers, community, the environment, their shareholders. Um, and we work in specific areas as well, um, such as anti bribery and corruption, human rights, modern slavery, uh, data protection, and uh, particularly in whistleblowing, which um, Lisa has been uh, focusing on particularly um, uh, in the last year or so, um, not least because of the European Directive, but because stakeholders are demanding it, ESG um, requires that we, we, we do focus on this. So um, what we're going to do is then talk a bit about um, speak up culture uh about communications whistleblowing communications and insights from a survey that we've run about getting started and then we'll take some questions um we're going to rattle through this at a pace but you will get a copy if you like of the slides so there's more on the slides we can probably cover but you can see that um, that later um so first and foremost uh in the center there you need effective whistleblowing systems obviously for, for, for business to work and we um, obviously look here at, you know, what, what have you got in place? What channels have you got in place and how well are they working? Uh, communications are absolutely key to this um, as well. And, and Lisa's going to be talking to you about that. But, but most importantly, none of this will work unless you've got trust. Uh, trust that um, you can talk openly. Trust that you can um, be heard and something will happen. Um, there was a, a, a very good uh, webinar last week um, uh, done by the National Guardian's Office and the IBE, who um, 
uh, looked at this whole issue. And one of the one of the speakers talked about fear and futility as being the key barriers to a successful speak up program. And this really struck a chord for me because I've been working with a, a major insurance organization uh, over the last couple of years who didn't have the right sort of speak up uh, program in place. And eventually in frustration, uh, there was eight of the uh, female employees spoke to a journalist um, and it, it, it went from nothing to a massive reputational risk, huge publicity of a negative kind. Um, and the new chief exec who just come in um, said absolutely this kind of behavior, which was around bullying and sexual harassment, um, cannot, cannot go on in the company. We're gonna do something about it. Um, and they have spent the last couple of years doing that, but the real issues there were around fear of speaking up, which came from the, you know, the research we did talking to employees, but fear of speaking up, um, fear that they may get retaliation, some kind of retribution that it may affect their careers, it'll affect their bonuses. Um, and then the futility of it. I remember one woman saying that she went to HR to talk about it and HR said to her, well, if you don't like the culture here, why don't you look elsewhere? Which is really not the, the, the kind of response you want. So trust is key. And one of the things um, that, that, that we frequently ask is, well, how do you build that trust? It's a very small world, word, but it's a very big issue. So how do you build that? Um, and we have looked at this over time and we've developed what we call the drivers of an ethical culture. Um, and those drivers need to be in place to have a strong speak up culture. And there are 10 drivers that we've identified of a strong ethical culture. And an ethical culture is something that every company should have. Of course, overall cultures are different. So British Airways is very different from a Ryanair. But at the heart of it, you need this strong ethical culture. And that's at the heart of a good speak up program. And the drivers are very quickly are strong ethical tone from the top. So you need um, uh, management to lead on this, to say this is the right thing to do, that employees are treated fairly and feel they're treated fairly, um, that personal development is taken seriously. Uh, which is a key thing and often part of grievances and management are trusted to do the right thing. And if managers aren't trusted to do the right thing, no one's gonna speak up. Um, so we, we, you really need to focus on ensuring, for example, that employees are uh, supported to do the right thing. Um, because if they don't feel it's the other side of the coin for management being trusted to do the right thing, but if they don't feel they're being supported, they're not gonna speak up. And then confidence in raising concerns. Um, you need to feel as an employee that there are numerous ways you can talk. You can talk to your manager, it should be an open door policy, but if that doesn't work, where do you go? Do you go to HR and get turned away or do you go to HR and feel that you will be heard, you will be listened to um, and something will happen or compliance. Um, uh, and, and, and if nothing else works, that there is a speak up policy that works where you can raise concerns and, and, and you will be heard. Um, and then encouraging everyone to speak up. So one of the uh, successful schemes I've seen is active bystanders. So if the individual won't speak up, then you as an active bystander jolly well should. So then there's health uh, and safety and well-being falls into this, which is a key part of, of, of a speak up culture. That, Customers and suppliers are treated fairly. And again, uh, we're going to talk about that a little later, but about um, uh, ensuring that they feel they can speak up. And of course, the local communities that you're working in can speak up and the environment, which can't speak up for itself, but is being respected. Um, so just to, just to, 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 to sum up on this then, um, strong ethical tone from the top is absolutely key. Um, that's senior management and the board. And one of the things I've heard recently is the board using Speak Up to really understand where the issues are in the organization and to focus in on them and make sure that the company is held to account. And then of course, we talked about management being trusted to do the right thing, uh, employees being supported, confidence in raising concerns, and the fact that employees feel they're treated fairly. But all those 10 drivers are key to a successful program.
Then finally, to sum up, it's about tone from the top. It's about senior leadership. It's about board, uh, the board reporting, um, seeing reports on it and engaging with them. It's about open door management culture, training, policies and processes, but management being trusted to act on the concerns and then employees feeling supported and confident to speak up. And with that, I'm gonna hand over to Lisa. Okay, thank you, Debbie. Um, so uh, before I talk about some of the communications insights from uh, a survey that we did earlier this year, um, I thought I would just share something that I heard in a podcast, the Wall Street Journal podcast um, about the Facebook case, which I'm sure you have all seen um, and been reading about. So Frances Haugen is uh, the woman who's become known as the Facebook whistleblower. She was actually brought, she was hired at Facebook um, to help deal with the problem of disinformation on the platform. And um, the company was obviously under huge pressure to, and making lots of public commitments to um, manage this problem uh, over the course of the election in the US last year. Um, she was hired to run the team that would figure out how this information was getting to users and to figure out how to revise the algorithms to um, ensure that it uh, didn't. Um, she, when the project kicked off, she went to her manager and she said, this isn't gonna work. My team's too small, they're too inexperienced, and the time frame is too short. And the response from her supervisor was, make it work. And she, there was no way they ended up closing down the program that she was part of. And she, as we all know now, um, took her concerns public because she had lost complete trust in the company that they were going to do what they said they were going to do to try to manage this problem. Um, so the other thing I thought, if you just click again, Debbie. Mm. Um, the other thing I thought I would share, I saw this in uh, the Financial Times last month. Um, but in the wake of this, there's been a whole kind of virgin industry of law firms, PR firms, um, psychologists who are supporting whistleblowers in a very organized fashion, mainly focused at the moment on the US tech sector, um, to tell their stories publicly. Um, and so that's great news for whistleblowers and whistleblowers should be supported, but for companies, it really reinforces how important it is that you are open to hearing these concerns and making sure that you are responding effectively internally so that people don't feel um, like Francis and others um, that they need to take their concerns public. Um, that comes down to trust as Debbie talked about um, and communications is one of the ways that we can um, build that trust and create help create that speak up culture. So I'm going to talk a little bit about a um, survey that we did earlier this year. Um, we spoke to, if you just go to the next slide, Libby, um, we spoke with about 11 directors of compliance um, and ethics, uh, clients of ours, friends of ours, um, just to understand what kinds of communications activities they found were most effective at helping to embed a speak up culture. Um, and we also did a review of about 24 companies looking mainly at their websites and annual reports or non-financial reports um, that they were making publicly available to see how they were making information about whistleblowing available publicly. So these were some of the, um, I'll go so through this in more detail, but these are some of the kind of interesting insights that came out from our interviews, which I thought I would share. Um, Speak up is often something that's incorporated in communications around the code of conduct or code topics, specific code topics. Um, and there seems to be two schools of thought. One is that speak up is a topic that you can communicate internally and externally in its own right. Um, and two is that it's sort of a sideline, a sidebar to any communications about code topics, whether that's um, bullying and harassment and how we treat each other in an organization or um, and to bribery and corruption, gifts and hospitality. Um, it seemed to us that the more mature the speak up culture in an organization, the more the company felt that speak up could be a, side, a sidebar to the code topics, really reinforcing the code topics. Um, but where there wasn't a strong speak up culture, people felt the need to speak explicitly about what speak up is, what you can speak up about, um, and how we will protect you, how we will support you. Um, so that was just an interesting kind of learning about the approach different companies are taking. Um, we learned, sorry, could you just go back? 
um, we learned that companies are um, really feeling the fear factor in their organizations and they're rewriting their whistleblowing policies with more reassuring language, making sure that they're very understood, the information that's in them is understandable um, for and accessible for employees, moving away from the term whistleblowing to speak up. That's something that we saw almost across the board. Um, and the other thing I'll just mention briefly, we'll talk a little bit more about this um, later, but investors are demanding much more transparency of whistleblowing data. So companies are feeling uh, the need to become more sophisticated in how they track their whistleblowing um, data and, how, and their ability to report on whistleblowing data. And um, these were some of the most common practices. So these will probably look fairly familiar to most of you. Um, if not, um, they are easy to do and, um, and definitely should be part of the arsenal. Um, you know, the onboarding process is a key point at which companies introduce employees and suppliers, third parties, um, to their whistleblowing speak up procedures and policies. Um, we find that the whistleblowing channels in the employee handbook posters are very often used to promote the whistleblowing channels. Um, especially in non-office-based environments. Um, QR codes are increasingly used so that people can um, easily open the whistleblowing apps or websites on um, mobile devices, which just makes it more accessible to them. Often the whistleblowing policy is published on the internet um, and the business management system. Um, and then there's some sort of um, inclusion of speak up as part of sort of annual or, or um, biannual compliance training. Um, but these were some of the things that we thought were sort of better or best practices that came out of our discussions. Um, I won't go through all of these, um, but again, you'll have the, you'll have the deck. Um, but I think what you'll see as you sort of read through these is that they really reinforce those drivers um, of speak up culture that Debbie mentioned, sort of from the top, you know, building trust. Um, there's things like using a shortcut on the speak up, uh, a shortcut to the speak up page of the employee intranet um, on the PC homepage. Um, that's something that you can rotate sort of, I think every four weeks is when you're meant to rotate the content on the home screen, just to make sure that people don't become kind of blind to uh, things that are always there. Um, uh, you, making sure that speak up is regularly mentioned in all hands meetings is a great way to really drive that tone from the top, um, both in terms of local management um, and executives, um, and also including speak up information and follow up notes. All hands meetings often, um, uh, often you know, have a lot of information shared, and uh, there may be an email communication that goes out to all employees afterward or a newsletter article. So making sure that speak up is mentioned in that communication is a really good idea. Um, the CEO uh, often writes an introduction to the code of conduct. Um, when we did our desktop research looking at websites and the information available there, we found that about 43% of the codes of conduct um, had an introduction from the CEO that mentioned speaking up, that really explicitly called on employees to embrace their responsibility. Um, so that's another one. Um, and then the other one I just wanted to flag um, is using anonymized whistleblowing cases and lessons learned for internal communications. And that could be using it as part of training modules. It could be using it for newsletter articles, um, intranet articles, intranet content. Um, by really picking apart some of the actual cases, anonymized cases that have been raised within the organization and showing that the company, that other people are speaking up that the company's listening to these concerns and that they're learning and changing as a result of people speaking up. It really does make employees feel that, they're, um, in, that the information that they can bring is valued and that they are contributing to the benefit of the business as opposed to standing on the outside. Can I get to the next week? Uh, these are some of the really novel ideas that came out, uh, which I thought I would share with you. Um, mobile compliance apps seem to be becoming more popular in organizations. Um, uh, and another one that I liked was using an email banner. So an email banner would appear sort of at the bottom, you know, in the, in the email signature um, of internal emails or even external emails. Um, 
uh, periodically to encourage speak up and just to kind of flag, you know, visit our speak up internet page for more information about how to speak up. They can be aligned with key calendar dates, either externally, maybe, you know, for International Arts Compliance Day in December, um, or, in, you know, International Human Trafficking Day, the UN International Human Trafficking Day, you can have something that's more focused on human rights. Um, but it can also be um, something that's done um, on internal cycles, so maybe quarterly sales cycles or year-end when maybe the sales team's feeling a bit of pressure to meet their targets, and you just want to make sure that they, um, that, that people out there are reminded that they can speak up if things aren't being done the way that they're supposed to be done. Um, some companies use taglines um, for their speak up program um, to just brand them with something that becomes familiar. Many companies call it their speak up program, um, but they may add something to the end. So Nestle, for example, used to um, have the tagline, tell us, um, although I think I've just read that they've phased that out um, and they've now just gone back to speak up. Um, Unilever uses business integrity, it's how we work, and that appears any time they put forward anything about their um, speak up channel, it's on the speak up channel itself, and again, that just means that when employees or um, third parties see speak up posters, they always see that tagline and it just helps with recall and recognition. Um, Hosting an annual integrity day is something that one of our clients um, does and has found to be very useful. It's a whole day that has various kind of um, research being released, um, information going out to employees and suppliers. There's webinars that take place um, during the day, videos from executives. Um, that's, it could also be an ethics week. We've had clients who've done something like that. In fact, the NHS, um, I think Debbie mentioned the Guardian's webinar, the NHS just had in October Speak Up Month. Um, and during Speak Up Month, the NHS and the National Guardians do a huge amount of um, promotion about speaking up. It's okay to speak up. You'll be protected to speak up. Here's how you speak up. They release data. They have lots of videos that go out, social media. Um, and one company used a, um, it was actually part of an ethics week, they did an internal webinar on Speak Up with employees, which just provided a really um, useful and informal format to be able to speak about the process and raise concerns that employees had about speaking up um, and take all of that on board to improve the program. Um, External communications. So I mentioned that we looked at uh, about 24 companies, um, mainly at the websites and the annual reports and how they were making that information um, available through those uh, vehicles. Um, we found that about 52% of those companies had a dedicated speak up section on their website. That could be a full page. It could be a um, section of a page that's about kind of ethical business and uh, or operating responsibly or the code of conduct, um, but they had dedicated information on the website about um, speak up. Um, interestingly, two companies actually had the contact information for the speak up hotline in the contact us section of their website. So that really is sort of going a bit further. 30% um, made the whistleblowing policy publicly available on the website. And um, uh, just over half um, provided on the website um, the total number of cases, and in some cases, substantiation rates, the total number of cases that were substantiated. Um, so those are things that you might want to consider. And again, um, uh, just sorry, Debbie, just go back for a second, and I'll, I know I'm running a bit long. Um, uh, I just wanted to mention that um, lots of companies in their annual reports categorize with statistics, so categorize with total numbers. Um, most often that's done by the type or the type of sanction, um, and less so is kind of the channel that was received. And we see, and we, sorry, I think somebody should come off mute if you don't mind muting, your, uh, muting yourself. Um, we did have a look at Twitter and LinkedIn and look at whether companies are using these channels to promote speaking up and didn't see a whole lot of evidence of that. So um, some companies said they use Yammer, but nobody seemed to think that it was a particularly useful um, tool for them. Um, across the board, 
the companies we spoke to said that they could do more to communicate their speak up system to third parties beyond onboarding. Um, some of the ways that they are doing that or some of the ways that we suggested to, that could be used to do that is ensuring that it's included in the speaker, uh, supplier code of conduct, having the speak up details in internal supply chain manuals, making sure that there's trained ambassadors um, for compliance and ethics in procurement. Um, and another thing is just making sure that the uh, account managers who are dealing with suppliers are trained in make, you know, understanding that they need to listen, that they need to know how to escalate concerns. Um, I mentioned the banner and the email signature. That's something that's often very flexible. You could have it in you know, sales team emails at certain times of year, just so it gets more, um, more attention when it's needed. Um, and just having a communications timetable, decide on a quarterly reminder to suppliers that they can speak up um, and find a way to get that out to them. Right. So very quickly, these are just some um, tips on kind of getting started with your communications. Um, one is just meet with your internal communications team. We have often found that the compliance department and the internal communications teams um, are not coordinated. They're not aligned necessarily on the tone and the objectives of the speak up program. So meet with your internal communications team and use them to um, help identify ways that you can build speak up into other things that are already happening in the organization. That ties right into aligning your speak up messages with other business campaigns. You may be doing a huge um, push in the organization around bullying and harassment um, and um, being able to tie speak up to what's being talked about a really positive note about bullying and harassment in the organization um, is a very effective way of helping employees understand the context in which to speak up. Um, and the last thing I'll just mention here is um, conducting a benchmarking survey. So a survey um, of employees or suppliers, you know, is something that you can use to inform where targeted communications are required and um, and you can try use it to track awareness of speaking up over time. I mean, you can ask on a sliding scale, how confident are you to speak up in our organization or how, how um, confident to you that uh, the company would respond to your concerns. Um, and that kind of data can be used to, um, to track how well you're doing and the improvements over time. And I think that's it. I think that's it. <laughs> well done, Lisa. Um, I realize that we've um, probably taken a little bit more time than um, we, we, we had planned. Um, and so there's not a lot of time for questions. But in fact, actually, there's not a lot on the speak up. Um, the, 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 uh, uh, sorry, they, the chat. <laughs> yeah. um, the, the, the chat line. So um, uh, please um, do, I think, you know, feel free if you want to come back to us with any questions. Uh, we'll do our best to sort of combine them and uh, put something out which 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 covers questions that you you may have had. Um, so uh, yeah, I think that's probably about it. Um, uh, Alicia, do you want to uh, close the session? Yes, that would be great. Um, just want to thank both of you, uh, Lisa and Debbie, for sharing your insights. A really interesting session, um, and for the audience for for joining us today. Um, I will send over, as uh, Debbie and Lisa mentioned at the beginning, the presentation um, after this, where their contact details, as you can see, are on this. So if you do have any questions that come up in between time, uh, please do contact uh, Lisa or Debbie. Um, and like they said, they will uh, answer your questions. Um, and if there's quite a few, we can always create a blog um, with all those questions answered. But again, thank you to everyone for joining um, and I hope you all have a good rest of the day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye.